what is he saying? He said, folk can be right in the church, got their Bibles wide open, and ain't getting nothing that God is saying. Uh, walking away with the same idea that they had when they came in the church 10 years ago. And that's amen. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 14, starting at verse number one, says, uh, The word of the Lord. Came, that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth, uh, that is a drought. Uh, uh, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. They, uh, the cry of Jerusalem is gone up, and, and their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads because the ground is chapped uh, for there was no rain in the earth the plowmen were ashamed they covered their heads yeah uh, the hind uh, also uh, calved in the field and forsook it because there was no grass amen and the wild asses did stand in the high places they snuffed up the wind like dragons their eyes did fail because there was no grass verse 7 says oh lord Though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We, we have sinned against thee. I, I hope, uh, uh, O oh hope of Israel, the savior thereof in time of trouble, why uh, should have thou be as a stranger in the land and as a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for a night? I'm almost done. Verse 9, that, why should have thou be as a man and a stone uh, 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 as uh, a mighty man that cannot save yet thou O Lord art in the midst of us and we are called by thy name leave us not Thus saith the Lord unto his people, thus have they loved to wander, they have not refrained their feet, therefore the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquities and visit uh -huh, their sins. Then said the Lord unto me, pray not for this people. For their, uh, for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offerings of oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Then said I, Jeremiah, uh, Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, ye shall not see the sword, neither shall you have famine. But I will give you a short peace in this place. Last verse, verse 14, then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither I uh, spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision uh, in divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. Amen and amen for the reading of the word of God. I want to leave us with a thought or subject or theme on, on today. It's just a matter of time. Look at somebody, if you will, and tell them it's just a matter of time. Some of the young folk may not know this, but back in 1959, Brooke Benton, a man, uh, had a hit record. He had a lot of hit records, but this one, a, a man, uh, was really a man, a hit, and it stood out beyond all the songs, a man, that Brooke Benton had wrote. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, I heard this song last night, and it provoked me to run up to my office, a man, and start writing. Uh, uh, it's just a, a matter of time. He, he said in his song for some of the younger folks, he said, after I gave you everything I had, you laughed and called me a clown. Just remember, in your search for fortune and fame, <laughs> what goes up must come down. And, 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 and it was a song, a man, about a, a woman who would walk in and out of a man, a man, a man who loved her dearly. He, she would walk in and out of his life. He, he, he brought her candy, uh, flowers a lot, took her to the Coney Islands. He couldn't do more than that. <laughs> I just mixed the song with Luther Vandross. Uh, nevertheless, it, it, it was like the more he gave, the more she expected. Pour 
poured out himself. And she just took and took and took and took and would not give anything in return. Well, John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then he went on in verse 17 and said that God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. So God gave us his only son and all we had to do was accept him and we could have eternal life. And the more I think of it, I, I believe that people today think that God, amen, Pastor Lewis, needs them. I, I, I believe, uh, like Brooke Benton uh, needed this woman, folk think that God needs them like that. Quite the contrary. I, I promise you that, that everyone will come to the knowledge of how much they need God versus he needs them. And the question is, when, when? And the answer is, it's just a matter of time. Oh, I hear from preaching with me. Thank you today. Uh, uh, th there was a drought in Judah. I said, I'm going to preach fast, so let me get out your way. Uh, uh, once, amen, they had a vibrant environment where, where people enjoyed all the niceties of life. If they wanted to eat steak, they could eat steak. Uh, uh, they could waste steak if they wanted. Just take a few nibbles off of it and throw the rest away if they wanted to. And uh, everything they wanted was right at their fingertips. And as a matter of fact, uh, they had it so good that their need for God in their mind and in their hearts sort of lessened. You, you know when we're down and, and in despair uh, and in great need or in pain or, or anguish we, we feel like and, and, and utter with our mouths how much we need God but when everything is alright we don't feel like we need him as much. Mm -hmm. Not, not y'all in here. I'm talking about folk everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because it sounds like us. We're now so comfortable with what we say God has done for us that he really is not a part of our lives. We, we, we have apartments and homes and cars, amen. We got money and, and jobs and career and businesses. We got children. We got spouses or significant others who say they love us. We, we eat at choice restaurants, travel to exotic places, fly on planes, cruise on ships and ride on trains. And all the while we say it's the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes, but have we ever stopped to do, and I mean really do, an evaluation of our relationship with God and really ask him, watch this, how, God, do I look to you? <laughs> no, 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 not as we see ourselves, because I'm going to be honest with you, Sister Elaine, when I look at myself in the mirror, I think I'm all right. I, I excuse uh, of the, 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 the multiple curse words that I use through the week. I excuse mm, the lusting that I do from day to day. I, I excuse that because when I look at myself, I read my Bible, I pray, I study, I fast from time to time. I'm all right to me. But God is provoking us as he tried so hard to provoke Judah to ask God, God, how do I look oh, to you? Because we can make ourselves see what we want to see. And, 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 and the prophets of today, <laughs> uh, they, they didn't help a, at all uh, as we looked in the scriptures and they're still doing the same thing today. They, they, they tell you what they think you want to hear uh, 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 because whatever it is that you want to hear, when they say it, they believe that it will provoke you to give them some money. Y'all know that everything has turned into money. Speeding tickets ain't about speeding, it's about money prophesying stuff good into your life ain't about prophesying into your life it's about money somebody better go with me here because the truth of the matter is I've seen it so many times that's why in seminary that's why they have us uh, studying psychology so we can tap into the minds of 
folk. And the truth of the matter is, all you got to do is learn how to crescendo your voice and say, I see a business owner in you. I see a president in you. And I see an entrepreneur, amen, in you. And I see somebody married and, and traveling with your children and your family. I see a multimillionaire in you. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Just telling folk what they want to hear. And as they are prophesying, <laughs> all God is hearing is blah, blah, blah. Okay, Mr. Prophet, no disrespect to you and the gift that you tell us that you're operating in, but I need to know what God sees in me. Maybe, maybe you do feel like you see all of this in me, but I need to know what God sees in me because the truth of the matter is, and I'm just going to throw this out parenthetically, ain't no prophet, no preacher, no pastor, no church member, no usher or deacon got no heaven or hell mm, to put you in. And so if you're going to be right with anybody, you better make sure that you're right with God regardless of what they say they see and you tell somebody to do it before it's too late. Yeah, yeah, see, that, that, that's what happened, amen, uh, here in this 14th chapter of Jeremiah. Judah had gotten, amen, uh, beyond themselves, a little beside themselves, and now it's time uh, to pay the piper. Uh, God is now in their face. Watch this, watch this. He, he's in their face demanding payment uh, for their lives, and, and we all uh, uh, know that the only way to come to God, watch this is to die to self Colossians chapter 3 verse 3 says for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God the truth of the matter is uh, your life is hid in Christ uh, it, 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 it is the dead in Christ that shall be raised incorruptible not those who are living to themselves and that's why we got to come to an avenue where we understand what it means to die to self and the truth of the matter is uh, when you die to self that means uh, you have to understand uh, Psalms 24, which says that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. I read a passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. He says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price, and therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Can I quote one more scripture? 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, whatsoever it is that you eat whatever it is that you drink and whatever you do you ought to do it to the glory of God well I can see right now that I'm boring some folk mm -hmm. Tommy look in that camera bag and get my rag for me the truth of the matter is uh, we need a man to take a good look at our lives now uh, mm -hmm. because uh, if we don't look real close at our lives now uh, when it comes down to facing God's judgment uh, and the truth of the matter is as the scripture has proclaimed that God uh, will judge the quick and the dead. <laughs> what does quick mean? That means those who are alive and remain uh, still will be judged and those who have gone on in the Lord shall be judged. Uh, and the truth of the matter is uh, as he judges uh, uh, the uh, mm -hmm, uh, uh, the truth of the matter is as he judges uh, we will come to this avenue mm, of no consequences uh, of now trying to give God excuses uh, of why we did not do what he said do. Uh, it's just mm, a matter of time. So, so, so look at yourself. Mm -hmm. don't, don't look at your neighbor. You know, sometimes in church they tell you, look at your neighbor. Now, today I'm asking folks to look at yourself. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself to see mm -hmm. what, what's keeping me mm -hmm. from really being uh, sold out to God. Because right now, truthfully, if I'm honest, right now, I am not sold out to God what's keeping me from being sold out to God because right now I am not uh, sold out to God. Uh, I don't know who else has this testimony, uh, but I'm going to keep on pushing uh, until I get an amen. Uh, what's keeping you uh, from being sold out to God? Because uh, right now uh, you're not sold out to God. Uh, you still get drunk uh, when you feel like it. Uh, still getting high uh, when you feel like it. Uh, still sleeping around uh, when you feel like it. Uh, 
still telling lies uh, when you feel like it. Uh, still smoking. Uh, puff, puff, uh, and won't pass uh, when you feel like it. Uh, am I on your block yet? Uh, yeah, the truth of the matter is uh, you still cheat on your spouse uh, and your taxes uh, when you feel like it. Uh, you still attend church uh, when you feel like it. Uh, you do stuff for God uh, when you feel like it. Uh, that's not sold out. Well, I know that this is an uphill sermon on today. And I know some are thinking in their mind and in their heart and probably have whispered to their neighbor, I shouldn't have came today. But the truth of the matter is, we cannot come to this avenue of doing right in the eyes of God only when we feel like it. Because the truth of the matter is, God is expecting so much more of us. Right now, Judah is saying, I am not sold out to God, but I've been saying, God, show me 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 so I can so God please show me how watch this I look to you before it's too late tell somebody it's just a matter of time yeah, we've been hearing this prophesied. I know that it did not help with all the false prophets uh, trying to predict to us what the last days. Uh, Matthew 24, Jesus was telling his disciples that no man knows the day or the hour that the Son of Man shall appear. And I know for a fact that a whole lot of folk have been predicting uh, when the end was going to be. Well, I can tell you right now, honestly, I don't know. Uh, but according to the scriptures, uh, I feel like uh, it's just a matter matter of time and for those of you who are still going to do your own thing regardless of what you hear me preach on today uh, uh, let me just point out a few uh, things if I can just point out a picture uh, of what went on in Judah uh, and maybe just maybe uh, it would convince some uh, to say I better stop playing church uh, maybe just maybe uh, it will convince some uh, I better get right with God uh, because man is born of a woman of a few days and feel full of trouble what is your life it is but a vapor which do appear and then it vanishes away it is appointed unto man wants to die and then after that is the judgment and so let me paint this picture that maybe will convince folk to get right with God today before it's too late because it's just a matter of time before God cracks the sky uh, so I got three things uh, that God told me to point out uh, and then I'm out of here uh, and out of your way. Uh, tell your neighbor good riddance. Uh, well, the truth of the matter is uh, the first thing I saw uh, is in verse number one through three that we read in Jeremiah 14. Uh, uh, the truth of the matter is uh, I can break it down since I've already read the verses. Uh, the first point I see here uh, is the people uh, they needed rain. <laughs> That's what they asked for uh, because there was such a drought in the land uh, that there was no rain and so they couldn't get buckets of water and the grass and the flowers and the wheat would not grow so the people needed rain what what is rain that's they wanted watch this their thirst quenched do you know that's going on today folk are in church clapping their hands hands raised passing out on the floor and still got thirst for stuff other than God if you read into that passage of scripture uh, when he talked about the cisterns uh, said they went to this cistern uh, to get water uh, and that one uh, what he was really saying uh, through the prophet uh, is folk was still going uh, after other gods uh, trying to get to God uh, God said you can't go uh, to the devil uh, and expect, uh, uh, and expect uh, a blessing from him uh, stop going after uh, whatever it is uh, that you're thirsty for uh, because the truth of the matter is uh, some of us uh, are just thirsty for attention. Uh, we need to be uh, the center of attraction. Uh, that's why sometimes uh, when we come to church, uh, there's not a smile uh, that could be uttered. Uh, we sit there uh, with our arms folded uh, and hoping uh, that somebody uh, will glance over uh, and see how sad I am uh, so they can walk over to me uh, and say, what's wrong, baby? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, I got attention now. Uh, well, I just been having uh, a horrible week. Uh, well, I just been going through. Uh, I tell you, well, uh, you've been in here 
inhaling and exhaling. Glory be to God. Get out of here with that sad sucking on lemons look because the truth of the matter is the Bible teaches me that I ought to bless the Lord at all times that his praise will continually be in my mouth and my soul makes a boast unto the Lord that the humble shall hear thereof. Who are the humble? Those who are discouraged. They need to see some folk going through something and still glorifying God. They need to see somebody who has death in their family and still glorify God. They need to see somebody who's lost their job and still glorifying God. They need to see somebody who's faced with divorce and still glorifying God. Is there anybody who is now under the reign of God? He said the people needed rain. They were still thirsty for other stuff other than God. It was like God running an ice cream shop. What's the name of that? Stone Cold or Cold Stone? Some folk like it. Some folk love it. <laughs> and some folk just got to have it. And the truth of the matter is, God is trying to tell us that none of it is good for us. Well, I can see right now that this is not flying over too well. That's one of those things about new sermons. You got to practice them at home two or three times before you present them to the people because the truth of the matter is folk will think you off course, but you're going to find out in this verse number 7 through 10 that the truth of the matter is we are right on schedule because not only in verse number 1 through 3 the people needed rain, but in verse 7 through 10 they prayed, watch this, without repentance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> many times uh, uh, have you heard uh, folk admit their guilt watch this but never ever do anything about it <laughs> uh, I, I, I know uh, uh, I'm in the wrong uh, uh, but 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 uh, never say please forgive me uh, you ever had an apology like that uh, yeah I was wrong uh, folk always don't mind uh, telling you uh, I, I know uh, I'm wrong uh, but uh, you don't hear them saying uh, God forgive me. Uh, it's not enough uh, just to admit that we're wrong. Uh, we got to go to God uh, and ask for forgiveness. Uh, the Bible says uh, in 2 Chronicles uh, 7 14, uh, if my people uh, who are called by my name uh, would humble themselves uh, and pray, uh, seek my face uh, and turn from their wicked ways, uh, then will I hear from heaven. Uh, then will I forgive their sins uh, and then will I heal uh, their land. Uh, but the people in Judah, uh, they prayed uh, without repentance. Uh, they're trying to trick God uh, into doing something for him. Uh, saying, God, uh, I know I'm sinning. Uh, God, uh, I know I'm doing everything uh, that's not pleasing in your sight. Uh, but for your name's sake, uh, do it anyway. Uh, as if uh, God uh, is going to bless uh, some mess. Uh, can I say that again? Uh, as if uh, God is going to bless uh, some mess. Uh, if you could do uh, anything you wanted to do uh, and God going to bless you anyway, uh, then what What's the sense uh, of even going to him? Uh, what's the sense uh, of even praying? Uh, what's the sense uh, of even fasting? Uh, and so the people prayed uh, without repentance. Uh, but the truth of the matter is uh, all sins uh, must be repented of. Uh, oh, yes, indeed. Uh, the truth of the matter is uh, if you confess your sins, uh, he is faithful and just to forgive us uh, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But I know why. Folk don't repent because they don't want to give God that promise that I'm not going to do it again. Because soon as this bottle is empty, I got plans to go get me another one. So soon as my chick on the side says she no longer wants to be a chick on the side, I get the chick that was on her side. He says, the people needed rain but they prayed without repentance. Let me go ahead and close, because this didn't fly at all on today. Third, but not least, not only did the people need rain, not only did they pray without repentance, but God promised them in verse number 11 through 14, he promised them their reward. 
Yeah, I know when we hear this word reward, <laughs> we think of something good. But I'm, fa- I'm sad to announce today that this sad reward here it is not a good thing. Because Romans chapter 6 verse 23 said that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, I just figured out something. Yeah, there is a good reward, but it's only found in Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But maybe I should read it a little slower because some thought it said, if any man be in church. Some thought it said, if any man be in the choir. Some thought, if any man be in the deacon's ministry. Some thought, if any man be in the pulpit. No, 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 no. Uh, he said if any man uh, be in Christ uh, because in Christ uh, if you're truly uh, in Christ uh, it's just a matter of time uh, that's the great thing about being in Christ uh, you're not in conscience uh, or even worried uh, about what's to come uh, because you're saved uh, you're sanctified uh, you're Holy Ghost filled uh, and fire baptized uh, I never said that you were perfect uh, I never told him that I was perfect uh, but I press uh, toward the mark uh, for the prize uh, of the high calling of God uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, and so it's just a matter of time uh, before God cracks the sky wide open uh, and Christ returns uh, for his own. Uh, now the question is, uh, are you in that number uh, of those uh, whose name is written uh, in the Lamb's book of life? Uh, are you among those uh, who God says, uh, well done, uh, my good and faithful servant. Uh, you've been faithful uh, over a few things. Uh, no. Uh, you didn't get it all right Uh, you didn't what they say Uh, cross every T uh, or dot every I Uh, there was some stuff uh, I deliberately told you uh, not to do uh, and you did anyway Uh, there was some stuff uh, I told you to do uh, and you never went and did it Uh, but uh, you've been faithful uh, over a few things Uh, is anybody in here uh, glad uh, that you accepted Jesus Uh, because if you ain't do nothing uh, good uh, in your entire life uh, one good thing you did uh, is grab on, uh, hold to Jesus. Uh, Time uh, is filled with swift transition. Uh, Not uh, on earth unmoved can stand. Uh, Build your hope uh, on things eternal uh, and hold uh, to God's uh, unchanging hand. Uh, Don't be like Judah uh, who everything they wanted uh, was in this earth. Uh, They didn't mind uh, praising God. Uh, That's what Judah means. Uh, It's praise. Uh, So they knew how uh, to jump. Uh, They knew how uh, to shout. Uh, They knew how uh, to spin and faint. Uh, But the truth of the matter is uh, they failed uh, to walk in uh, the wisdom of the Lord. Uh, That's why the Bible teaches us uh, in Colossians 3 and 2 uh, to set uh, your affections uh, on things above uh, and not on things on the earth. Uh, Well, I'm closing uh, because I ain't got no amens going. Uh, I'm going to get on out your way. Uh, But the answer uh, to the question uh, is you going to are you going to be happy uh, when When God cracks the sky, the answer will be revealed in just a matter of time. Because guess what? I don't know who's saved. I have no way of knowing. No, no, they got some prophets out here who can look at you and tell if you're saved or not. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't have that gift. But what I do have, I render it to you now. That it's just a matter of time before God requires your soul. Now there's this rapture where the believers will get caught up together. But then God also, as we all know, requires souls on a daily basis. Today could be your day. You know how you've been hoping to hit the lottery? This could be your day. And if it is, the question is, are you in the mindset of those at Judah who 